um, especially in the shoulder end of things, compared to the, uh, the well-finished lamb. There's not near as much shoulder and there's near as much fat cover on this animal as there is in what I would consider a prime lamb. The, um, the surprising part to me was as how much finish there is on this lamb compared to what it was when it was live. I was pleasantly surprised at the cover there was in this product here. Again, um, if you look at the inside, the kidney and the, kid the channel fat, um, I am surprised as how much fat there is in this carcass based on what it looked like when it was live. Um, it still will make decent, uh, a decent product to sell, but compared to the, uh, the prime lamb, obviously more cover, um, making it that much more uh, uh, pleasant to eat. Okay, so the two lambs we're looking at here, uh, the one right here was the, was the uh, thinner, skinnier lamb uh, yesterday, and, and this was what I would call the, the best lamb in the group. Um, it's very obvious to me, if you just look at the neck alone, without even looking at the rest of it, you can see the amount of muscle and, and fat cover on, the, on this, what I would call the prime lamb versus uh, the, the, the skinny lamb, that, that tells it all right there. But when you follow up um, on, this, on this skinnier lamb, I can see without even touching it, this, the, the ridge, the backbone. And, and, and I can tell between this lamb and this lamb that this lamb doesn't have near the, uh, near the, the muscle that this lamb has, near, uh, uh, near the uh, weight, the overall weight. When you look inside and compare this lamb to this lamb, you can see the fat difference on the inside. And, and, and this, is, this, is, this is a really nice looking lamb on the inside. I am quite surprised though, I will say I'm surprised that there's any fat on this lamb because when I saw it live, I didn't think you'd see any on the back at all. So that to me is a bit of a surprise. Okay, so this, this lamb here is, in my opinion, isn't a lamb, it's a sheep. This is, uh, this is the mutton. This is the older uh, animal that we uh, were looking at yesterday comparing to those two carcasses. Um, again, um, I'm surprised that there's uh, um, the amount of fat that I see on this surprises me because when I was looking at it live, it did not look um, like it had any flesh on it. Having said that, if you put your hand on this carcass, run your hand down, you can see the backbone, you can feel the backbone, and there's, there's quite an indent in here, all the way down on both sides of that backbone, which tells me when you peel that fat back, you're not gonna get near the muscle that you would have on that prime lamb, and, um, and, and the yield just won't be there. As well, the, uh, the, the color of this so-called lamb is, is much darker and not as appealing to me and maybe to the markets that I'm looking for um, as, as, the, as the prime lamb we looked at over there. My market is a halal market. They like this lamb because they don't have too much fat on it because we like to less fat. That's why I like to my halal market, all this lamb for the lean stuff. They don't have a fat on it and the good stuff. That's, that's all they like, the halal. Now, the colored meat, because the little bit is uh, dark, right? Because it's, uh, when, when you cook this, stuff is a little bit tough because the lean stuff they take a little bit of time because we like it all the halal market right and also this they have a little bit of cover we can use like when the this pieces this lamb make it like a curry right and this lean and this lamb they have a little bit of cover we can make the barbecue steaks that's why we like this i like this stuff for the my halal community this is a little bit of fat because they like to mostly the white stores, right? For the halal market, doesn't like that too much fat. We can like this lamb, we like to uh, give it to Longos, Island Farms, that's product, they like it. Okay, this, this lamb, the difference that that lamb, because this one, they have too much fat on it, because when we break this lamb, we're gonna waste this lot of fat. We're gonna lose a lot of weight with this lamb, right? When you're gonna lose a lot of weight, they're gonna lose the money. Better, 
then this lamb, we're going to like that lamb. That's all. And this lamb, little bit, is going to be dark. It's a little bit dark. But that lamb is a pink. Okay, so these lambs here, for our market and our needs, really don't suit my requirements uh, due to the uh, size, color, um, and basically the, our markets don't, we don't have a market for them, really. It's way too big for us. Uh, this one here, the, the just um, the fat cover, there's, I mean, there's barely any meat on it. Uh, this one has way too much fat for me and um, you know, way too dark on the inside and the legs. This one, the inside is a nice color. Uh, the legs are nice color. Just the fat and its overall size doesn't, doesn't fit our need. First off, I like the color that I first see. The color on external and internal color is, 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 is there. Uh, this one here, uh, it's a little too underweight for us, but we do have an application for it. We do have a need, a requirement on, as a customer uh, at, for portions, the loin portion, shoulder portion. So, we wouldn't refuse this lamb, but we would, you know, we would use it for that source. It's a retail chops for barbecuing. It's not ideal for that. Um, this one here, beautiful color. Uh, this is the, you know, the number. This one here and this one here is ideal for our need on color, uh, size, the fat, the saddles covered up nice and neat, nice there. Um, and for barbecuing is the perfect sizes. If I had to choose one of the three carcasses for, for our need, ideally ideal lamb, um, it's very difficult because one and three are really similar, but looking at the fat cover and yield loss, I would have to, you know, I would probably, I like the color of number one, I like the actual amount of fat cover that I won't lose on number three, though. Um, so it's a pretty... I would probably go with uh, number one. Uh, we receive our lamb uh, primarily, m most part, all in primals, uh, broken down just like beef would come short loins in a box. We buy saddles, uh, we buy the racks, come in Frenched in a box. Shoulders, we get this is this is what our spec would be, which is a square cut lamb shoulder and a semi bonus lamb leg, and they're all lamb legs in one box, shoulders in another box, saddles, and we do that primarily uh, for the based on the needs of the business at our stores. Uh, some stores do very well with racks and saddles and they suffer on the shoulders so they don't need to buy the shoulders. Whole carcasses are mainly purchased. We have certain markets that utilize the whole carcass and they do that weekly, uh, but most of the, the, the is during Christmas, Easter, uh, Thanksgiving. We bring in whole carcasses. We do a um, a combination tray, it's called a lamb combo pack, and it's basically a little bit of everything on what you see on the table in this one retail tray. So a little bit of lamb chop, loin chops, a little bit of rack, stew, shank, leg, and shoulder, and customer can just, doesn't need to buy a half a lamb or a whole lamb, they can just buy a portion at a retail, you know, between 30 and 40 dollars worth of lamb, and that's it, and, they, and they're ready. Um, some of the pot is right now on the shoulder. Um, there's not much fat that I'm going to have to remove from it, so that's that's better for me. Uh, the stamps are all always come off um, on at retail. Um, the saddle, there's a little bit of fat I'm going to have to trim off, but it's it, it, it's you know the perfect amount. Um, the leg is usually always has the most uh, waist with the shoulder, but that all gets chimed down. Everything comes off. At the end of the day, on retail, it's all about presentation. We we sell. We don't have uh, self-serve cases. We have seller. We have self-serve cases. So it's all about presentation on that tray. And once I start chopping it up, and I'll show how what I mean by that. 
So as for our uh, retail level in display, we would uh, remove all the, the, the excess fat off the saddle. Take it to the saw, split it in half. We leave a bit of a tail, we don't leave the full flank on the loin. And at our, within our uh, standards, we, we uh, knife our saddles. Um, the less meat needs to get onto that saw, which causes the heat and the friction, and that'll take away shelf life from the product. So we, we knife our loins. Take it to the saw. Then we go through every individual chop and we do a little bit of trimming, leaving partial of the tail. Our standards is what you see on the bottom is what you see on what you see on the top is what you see on the bottom as well. We don't hide anything underneath. Shelf life uh, is, is huge at store level. We have we only keep our meat in the counter. Uh, five days, we, we remove the product two days before the expiry date, best before date. Um, as for, for wastage, there's a level of uh, the way we operate. On, there's a cost of doing business on our side. Uh, there's a level that those counters need to look at to make it attractive for customers to purchase our meat. Uh, and, and part of the waste always comes in with uh, yield losses, another one. Um, we have certain yield percentages that, we, that, that are calculated in the formula for, for every cut actually. Every cut has its own calculation to that. Our, our retails are calculated based on demand on products. Racks are really high in demand. Uh, the, the restaurant markets are huge um, and that drives a huge uh, factor in the cost. Uh, our racks are always Frenched, so that's loss on the flank, so that has to be made up there as well. Um, Supply and demand is seasonal is another huge, uh, that, right, the, the volume of lamb that goes through is, is tremendous, so that calculates into the factor. Uh, lamb is also used at retail as a driving, front page driving. Uh, aggressive ads are, are, are huge at Easter, Christmas um, for, for the lamb market. Um, and most of it is just consumer demand. Uh, the, you know, the most popular parts of the loin and the rack. Uh, ideally, barbecue items is the shoulders, a little bit more fat. There's a lot of flavor in that shoulder. Uh, leg, leg is pretty lean and uh, does very well on barbecue as well. Um, and those are, and actually one thing that also is supply and demand that drives uh, re on our end on retail is uh, Food Network. Uh, every time they post, they do cooking recipes, they do things, we find uh, an increase on those specific items. So when shanks, they're doing all these huge things with shanks, we get a high demand on shanks as well, which drives the cost up because there's only so many and retails go up as well. Supply and demand sometimes is just not enough of it. Yeah, so this, this, this actual lamb looking at the saddles right now, um, is a little dark for my for our needs in, in our market. Uh, unfortunately, the size is perfect. Color on the rail looked great, but now that I, as I start trimming away, you start noticing the leg has a dark some dark on it there. The the saddle is a little way a little too dark uh, on 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 the lamb. Customers really really like is is the lighter pinkish color to it, um, and unfortunately. It, it, unfortunately, it's not there on this one. <laughs> uh, some of the reasons why this is possibly why the color it is, it was, uh, it was killed yesterday, the animal, um, so it didn't get quite as much time in the cooler to uh, cool down and, and settle, so that's possibly one reason why that happened. So some of the other elements that may cause some dark cutters uh, are, is the feed, lack of water, stress, and the age of the animal.
because the mutton, the difference with the, with the lamb and the mutton, because they have a smell. It's a strong smell and it's a tough meat too. And plus, his meat is a little dark, it's old, because when they get meat old, they go more tough. My halal market, they're looking for the lamb. It's a lean lamb, you don't have a, too much fat. That's all they like, my halal market. This the French rack. I'm gonna make a French. Off. This is the lamb sarrow, sheep. See the difference for the lamb and the sheep, the color. Okay, so we have some uh, grilled lamb loin chops here uh, from the premium cut of the lamb that we just uh, we did previously. There's no strong odor to it? No. No. Tastes like lamb? Yeah. That's tender? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good flavor. Yeah, good flavor. Yeah, very good, yeah. It's yeah. juicy. It's very good. <laughs> yeah, as an expectation uh, after a cooked product, th this is this is very good. People usually that buy lamb know what they want and know, and visually, really, is visual. You know, yeah, it's, not, it's not like beef. You know, beef is you know prime grade marble, and you look for the more marble in that in lamb. Its color is the is is one of the factors on our side. So then how do we address the issue then of the color? That's our thing, you know, it's, it, with, that we've identified, isn't it? Because we've gone through all the work, we've done everything. The color was wrong, the taste was right, everything else is done right, everything else is right. Except for the color, and not even all of the color, the color of part of the carcass. Partial of the carcass, correct. Um, You're right. And unfortunately, it's the, it's it's the, the most, most expensive cut that uh, is affected by this decision-making process. The most expensive piece, yes. The rack and the loin, the saddle, which is the loin chops, the rack, you get the rack, rib chops, French racks. We can eliminate age, we can eliminate feed. Yeah. We can really, uh, the water factor, I mean, they had water yeah. um, before they, so within before four hours of, of, of trucking, yeah. that slaughter. But it, to me, I thought, I think it's the, it's the time that they arrived and then they were quickly, we handled them and then they... Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so it's the process probably, yeah. right? Like the process to the actual, to the end of the line. <clears throat> so here we have uh, the, the older lamb, the mutton, lamb, uh, loin chops, sheep. or sheep. Um, off the bat, I, I can sense a little bit stronger order to it. That's personal, like... It's tougher. Yeah. Right? Chew. Stronger. It's greasy. Deeper. Yeah. Isn't it? Is it gre greasier? Yeah. Is it tough? It's tough. Why? Oh, yeah. Aside from the toughness, though, it's um, it's not that bad. Like, I, I, I'm enjoying it. Someone that, that eats lamb kind of knows what they're expecting right off the bat, like right from when they open the package. Um, they'd be very disappointed because because what they're accustomed to, what they're used to eating. Yeah. The texture is what I think is really, it's, yeah. you're, you're, you're pulling on this, yeah. right? Yeah. 
Now, what about if this was someone who is not a typical lamb eater? This is the first time they've tried lamb. I don't think they would. I don't think they buy it again. But to me, it's uh, like we talked about all through this that there's markets for everything, so people know what they're getting. <laughs> So there's nothing wrong with the, the mutton. If you know that you're getting mutton, then you're paying for mutton. Well, learning for me today was uh, don't judge a book by its cover. So the lamb that I thought would have came out exactly what I wanted, partially did not. The thing that surprised me the most is when we, when we actually did the live lamb grading, if, that, if that's what we want to call it, and then saw the carcasses hanging, how Different, they looked live, and then when they were hanging, a lot of a lot of things disappeared, and it became more difficult for me, anyways, to decide which was a prime lamb and which was not. If we had not identified those carcasses uh, at the live stage, I think all of us would have been challenged. Yes, certainly the the, the thinner halal style lamb and the sheep. Yes, those were obvious. Take the other three, kind of, and I think even Joe admitted that looking at those three, you know, they all are. Okay, right? They all meet uh, the requirements that we're looking for. So that was really shocking to me. Uh, I learned from my tried to introduce to what we like a lot of community and what we uh, provide to Longos and uh, all the white stores. Yeah. That's where I learned and I show them and this stuff because I deal with the halal all the community. That's what they like, the lean stuff. Less bad. I suppose what I learned most from the exercise of the last two days is uh, a couple.